Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. I got an email from Preston Brown, subject line, divine intervention, quote unquote, with BYU football. Okay, well, before we get into the email, in case there's anybody that's new to the channel, why would I be looking at football when this is mostly a second coming channel? The reason why is because the Lord speaks to his children in many different ways. We're all very different and we have different interests and priorities. And some people think uh, in terms of sports and it makes sense to them. They're athletes, they're coaches, or they're just big fans. And so the Lord speaks to his children in languages that they can understand. And for some people, it's sports. And it seems like something really interesting is going on this year, both with BYU football and the Kansas City Chiefs. I'll remind you, or in case you didn't know, the Kansas City metro area contains Independence, Missouri, which is the future site of the New Jerusalem. Okay, so you have this like undefeated thing going on with BYU as well as the Kansas City Chiefs. So far, the season is not over yet, but it turns out we're going to mostly focus on BYU, but we are going to talk about Kansas City a little bit later because uh, there was a couple interesting things that I, I didn't realize till I made this video. But with this BYU football season, it seems like there's like three games that like really stand out that I that you can point to and people have noticed that there was something quote unquote magical or divine or miraculous about these games. And uh, anyway, okay, so let's get, let's all press and Brown. Okay, Jared, hope this finds you well. I know you're busy. Thanks for all you do. A little while ago, he did a great video about the BYU football team this season. As a BYU sports fan, I've been stoked since the summer for both football and basketball. I've had my eye on this very special season from the beginning. I was just listening to a sports talk video with guys that interviewed the BYU quarterback, Jake uh, Retzloff. I think that's how it's pronounced, Retzloff. I watched the video. I think that's how they pronounced it. I can't remember. And they said this. And then he puts an excerpt from that video. Um, I'll get back to this in just a minute. It's this video right here. This is PFF College Football Show. The name of the video is BYU versus Utah Review, PFF grade release show. So it's these two guys. It's a sports show. And um, oh, let me pull up this, the transcript really quick. I had all this stuff pulled up and then I had to step away. And so you can't do that. Otherwise, when you come back, everything's reset. Okay, so I want to read. It's like just at the very beginning of the video. I'm going to read this portion of the transcript before I go back to the email. So the guy with the glasses is talking and he says, before we get to the um, SC players, I just want to like go over. We interviewed Jake. So it's this guy right here, this uh, Jewish quarterback, the first ever Jewish quarterback for BYU football. Uh, in a year, let me just remind you, <clears throat> or if you didn't know, um, BYU has not had an undefeated season. I'm talking about for the entire season uh, since 1984. 1984 was actually the only time that they had a completely undefeated season and they took the national title. This year, it's looking that way. So far, they're undefeated and they have this Jewish quarterback. 1984 was also the year that President Nelson and President Oaks became apostles. So this year, 2024, was their 40-year anniversary. So, okay. So um, we interviewed Jake, the quarterback. Um, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, at, the end of, at the end of the interview, I'm upset that we didn't get this on camera. It's my fault for uh, ending the interview prematurely because I talked to him. Um, I, talked, I talked about him. And he was like, hey, you guys. Okay, let me get... So that's the part I wanted to read. So there was this interview that this guy was doing with uh, Jake, the quarterback from BYU. And he he didn't get it on, on camera, but he's telling it in this video. Okay, so let's go back to the email. I talked with him. Uh, you guys are... You guys are on... Oh, sorry, it's hard when it's like the transcript because it doesn't have correct punctuation and sometimes it messes up. Uh, he's like Jake, Jake, he's like, 
I think there is something divine, or I think there is some divine intervention with our season. He's like, at the UCF game, which is the University of Central Florida, you know, the whole rockets and all all that for UCF, the rocket launching. And he's like, in that game, we scored a touchdown. And right after we scored the touchdown, I looked up at the sky and the rockets started taking off. We're going to look at that in just a little bit. I had no idea that this happened. Um, there was actually an article written about this. So he was taking that as a sign. They scored a touchdown during that game. And then these rockets, like literal rockets going into outer space, launched uh, as they scored that touchdown. Okay, continuing. I was like, if that doesn't show that there's something, div- some divine intervention in our season, I don't know what will. I said, listen, Jake, every great college football team has got a little magic. You got to be a great team, obviously, but you, you got to have a little magic as well. BYU has some magic in this game. And honestly, after talking about the BYU-Utah game, after saying divine intervention, this is the team of destiny, it feels like for BYU. So unbelievable, so unbelievable game for the Cougars, keeping their undefeated season alive. Okay, so I'll put a link for this video in the description box below, and it's just right at the very beginning. Um, You can skip forward to probably about like, the 26-second 20 se- mark. That's about where it starts. Okay, continuing with Preston's email. This was just after the miraculous, in all caps, win over Utah last Saturday. Awesomely, the Come Follow Me scripture segment we had with our family that night, uh, the, the night, that night before the game, was Mormon, chapter 9, verses 1 through 25. Jesus Christ is a God of miracles. It does feel like some divine intervention is happening with this season. I mentioned in a comment about seeing special numbers pop up everywhere. I finally looked it up and the main numbers with star players on both offense and defense, number seven, number 17, which president Nelson is the 17th president of the church. We've talked about that number a lot and number 11. That's also a number that's been associated with president Nelson. Um, Okay. Number seven offense, you have the, I'm not going to go over all the names, but number seven offense, the star running back, number seven defense, the star safety uh, with a key interception, number 17 offense, star receiver, which huge kick with a huge kick return for a touchdown, uh, which is not easy to do. And then number 17 defense, the star linebacker. And then there's Jake Retzloff. Uh, he's the quarterback and he's number 12. Uh, he's the Jewish quarterback and uh, whenever I think of 12, I think of the 12 tribes of Israel. And the number five, Lassiter, main receiver to connect with number 12. So 5 plus 12, 17. Um, who knows what lies ahead for the BYU Cougars, but as you've pointed out many times, the Lord works in mysterious ways, and it's certainly something to cause us to wonder. Thanks so much again. Love all you do, Preston. Thank you for the email, Preston. And um, I've come across some more things I came across this video. This is like uh, the last little bit of the BYU-Utah football game. Um, I decided to watch it, and I was on the edge of my seat even though I knew what the outcome was. Um, It was not looking good for BYU. It it was pretty incredible how this all went down. So I'll put a link for this in the description box below. Here is an article from Lawless Republic. BYU versus Utah game recap gets holy war hysteria as the Cougars find a miracle versus Utah. If you're not familiar with with college football or college sports, but in this case specifically college football, um, there's a big rivalry between BYU BYU and Utah, and one of the nicknames for their game every year is the holy war. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of members of the church, you know, that go to both schools, and so there's like this. Um, rivalry. Okay, what just happened? Entering this game, anticipation was at an all-time high. Okay, as I read this, you guys, think about how we're anticipating Christ's return. Make sure to subscribe to her, by the way, anticipating Christ's return. Uh, My friend Caitlin Hawker, that's the name of her channel. We're anticipating Christ's return. President Nelson has used sports analogies um, a number of times in reference to the second coming. In fact, let's go to this one right now. 
This is uh, my spreadsheet called Quotes, Second Coming. It's a timeline of what I feel like are key quotes about the Second Coming. This one's from President Nelson. This is from his uh, pre-recorded for Strength of Youth message of 2022. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I have the audio of it. If you'd like a copy, just email me and I can send you the audio. Um, he says, okay, Heavenly Father knew you would recognize truth and he knew you would be willing to help carry the message of Jesus Christ and his gospel to others around the world. Using a baseball analogy, we are in the last half of the ninth inning. So that means it's the last time that any team in that game is up to bat. Okay, it's the home team. Uh, it's the very end of the game. Earlier in the 80s, about 40 years before this, uh, President Ezra Taft Benson used the same analogy, but he said that we were just in the last inning. Now, President Nelson is making it, we're saying that it's the last half of the ninth inning. So it's the very end of the game. And uh, with this BYU-Utah game, it came down to the very end of the game, just like the Super Bowl with the Kansas City Chiefs versus the San Francisco 49ers. It came down to overtime, and not just overtime, but the very end of overtime. Okay, so we are in the last half of the ninth inning. Our Heavenly Father and His Son chose you to be on their team when the game's on the line. And then he, there's more. You can pause this and read the rest of it. I've read it a million times. So, okay, let's go back to this article. The, the wording, I feel like, is a pretty good parallel to... Um, the second coming in the church and the church playing this game for souls, trying to uh, get more on the covenant path and bringing more to Christ. Um, okay. So entering this game, anticipation was at an all time high. One of the most hyped BYU Utah games in recent memory was about to unfold. BYU came into the game undefeated. The matchup was three years overdue. And both, Holy War, and both Holy War participants were coming off bye weeks, further heightening the excitement and tension. Now, you'll have to tell me in the comments. I don't know why it's three years overdue. I assume it has to do with like this like mix-up of like these different athletic conferences. And maybe BYU and Utah haven't played for three years because they're in different conferences. <coughs> I haven't really followed it. So everybody, I guess everyone's been waiting for three years for another BYU-Utah football game. So, and then on top of that, if you don't know what a bye week is, that means a week where you don't have a game. So everybody was like really excited for this to happen for many different reasons. It describes, you know, parts of the game and then um, how Utah was doing really good. And then it says, okay, now think about right now, the state of the world the state of the church and persecution and um, and more. I'll show you in a second. Things were definitely dire with BYU facing its largest deficit of the season and in the loudest environment they had ever, that they had faced all year. So largest deficit, uh, like the furthest behind in points, and then the loudest environment, referring to playing at, at Utah's stadium. You guys, right now in the world, things are very loud. They're very, very loud um, and contentious. This parallels perfectly with the time that we live in right now. But while the offense struggled to move the ball to start the second half, the Cougar defense rose to the occasion. Now, what's interesting is that we actually just experienced a couple years ago uh, what you might call the largest deficit in uh, convert baptisms. Let's go to Wikipedia's article for uh, membership history of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And let's pay attention to this column right here. Okay. This column is, let me just double check, go to the very top, percentage growth. And 2020, I have highlighted in red because the percentage growth, here, let me zoom in. The percentage growth was only 0.6%. It did a little bit better the next year in 2021, and, and it's climbing, okay? Um, but you can see in the years before that, so 2020, we had the pandemic, and that's what hindered uh, missionary work and convert baptisms. But when you go back in time, you can see there's no other year that really comes close to 0.6%. You have to go all the way back, 
all the way back to 1937 and 1930. But those were higher with 0.93 and 0.96. Um, keep going back, keep going back, keep going back. Here's a 0.94 in 1858. And then for some reason, from 1855 to 1857, uh, there was a loss in membership. And I feel like I should know what happened there. I'm not sure why we lost members of the church. Um, I, I don't know. If you know more, let me know. So you have to go all the way back to the 1850s uh, to see a worse year than uh, 2020. Um, you have some other years that are also <coughs> pretty bad, but not as bad as 2020. And then 1839, uh, when the prophet Joseph Smith was still alive, uh, you had, you know, in the negative in that year, but that's it. So 2020, uh, there was a pretty big deficit when it came to convert baptisms. And we're trying to recover from that right now. This is a, this is a parallel to this game. You know, if you're looking at the game as like representative of this last dispensation or something like that or or whatever, um, it fits pretty well. I have more to say about this, by the way, but I'm going to do a separate video because um, Elder Cook said something really interesting uh, about this year. So I'll do another video about that. OK, so let's go back here. OK, things were definitely dire. Uh, with BYU facing its largest deficit of the season and in the loudest environment they had faced all year. Okay, let's continue on. Okay, end of the article. It might, it might not be possible to truly communicate just how out of this game BYU looked. E ESPN probably does the best job of this as they gave Utah a 99.7% chance to win with a minute 30 left. And I've seen graphs of this. I should have pulled one of them, one of them up. But yeah, it was looking, you know, according to these like professionals, it was really looking like BYU was going to lose. Just a minute thirty left, ninety nine point seven percent chance of losing. So you guys don't despair. If you think things are bad, don't despair. Okay, the Cougars looked all out of sorts throughout the night. There was an abundance of false starts and other penalties, poor clock management, and mistimed uh, substitutions that left the offense scrambling on what felt like every play. But just like against Oklahoma State, SMU, and the rest of their schedule, BYU found a way. The Cougars are still undefeated for at least one more week, and the magical season continues. The magical season. Yeah, it is a magical season. Okay, so that was the BYU-Utah game. And then I came across this. I, I didn't know about this story. This is KSL Sports. This is a Utah station. Um, SpaceX rocket launch took place during BYU football game at UCF. That's the University of Central California. <clears throat> Orlando, Florida. During Saturday's BYU football game at UCF, a SpaceX launch occurred east of the game. <coughs> Excuse me. Um... A SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket launch took place at Cape Canaveral, which is about 30 miles east of FBC uh, Mortgage Stadium, home of the UCF Knights. And there's video of it. Here's the football game at the bottom. There's the rocket la launch in the background. There, um, there's a few videos. Here's probably a better one. You know, the first thing that came to mind when I first saw this on a symbolic level is I was thinking about the fact that rockets, you know, they go up into space and one of the things that's going to happen when Christ comes is that those that are on the earth that are alive, we're going to be caught up and we're going to meet Christ in the clouds. That's the way that the scriptures describe it. I don't know exactly what that means, but it seems like it is actually literal. You will go up. I don't know how far up you're going to go, if it's going to be into space or just in the sky or what that entails. But that's something that kind of caught my attention. Anyway, uh, at 5.47 which it's an interesting number to me. 47 always makes me think of when the Saints entered the Salt Lake Valley. At 5.47 p.m. Eastern Time on Saturday, Falcon 9 launched into the air. Interestingly, the launch coincided with a BYU touchdown pass from Jake Retzloff to tight end Mata Avatasi. 
or Ase in the third quarter. The touchdown extended BYU's lead 31 to 10 with seven minutes and one second remaining in the third quarter. Fans lined up alongside the back row of FBC Mortgage Stadium to get a glimpse of the rocket launch. A strong showing of BYU football fans was in attendance at Saturday's game. And uh, it looks like, I mean, you see a lot of blue here. I don't know the the University of Central Florida's colors, but I'm wondering if like a lot of these people right here are BYU fans. Okay. So this is what, um, in this video right here, this guy that interviewed the quarterback, the quarterback said that it felt like it was divine. Let's read what he said again. He says, uh, he's like, in that UCF game, you know, the whole rockets and all that for UCF, the rocket launching. And he's like, in that game, we scored a touchdown. And right after we scored the touchdown, I looked up at the sky and the rockets started taking off. I was like, if that doesn't show that there's some divine intervention in our season, I don't know what will. So it's it's amazing. And there, there's video of it. Um, there's some interesting numbers associated with it. So I'll put a link for this in the description box below. And then uh, this is actually the first game that I, I mentioned on the channel because um, there was another game. This was Oklahoma State. This is also KSL Sports. How BYU kept undefeated season alive with quote-unquote spiritual drive over Oklahoma State. Um, I'm not going to read this first part. Uh, they talk about BYU's magical run. Uh, Retzloff said everybody believed it, as in like, no, yeah, something really is going on here. Um, we are going to win. We're going to remain undefeated. And then at the end of the article, BYU, fo- BYU football delivered a quote-unquote spiritual experience. The highlight-grabbing receiver has been revising his best plays at BYU li- at BYU list quite often since he arrived in the spring of 2023, but this one has to go to the top. When Retzloff took the podium to speak with the media in the wee hours of Saturday morning, he called it a quote-unquote spiritual experience. It's magical, spiritual, Retzloff said. How can you not be romantic about this game? So, I don't know. Maybe similar things have been said about the other games, but there's at least these three games, Oklahoma State, UCF, and Utah, where there's like these magical, miraculous, divine things taking place, and people are noticing, including the quarterback of BYU, who's a Jew. Um, There's some more I want to cover really quick. This is from The Atlantic. Um... The Jewish quarterback at Mormon College, which uh, McKay Coppins is a member of the church, and uh, it's not a Mormon college. It's a college of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, but okay. Um, He says, there may be quite simply no place in America less Jewish than Brigham Young University's football stadium on Yom Kippur. So this was during a game with University of Arizona. Um... If you go over here, it was on this day, Saturday, October 12th. It was Yom Kippur. Okay. Um, in a typical year, few of the roughly 63,000 fans who streamed into Lavelle Edwards Stadium in Provo, Utah, for the annual homecoming game would even be aware that Saturday was the holiest day on the Jewish calendar. But this is no typical year. The star quarterback for BYU, Jake Retzloff, a Jew- is Jewish, and he has held the team... Uh, for the okay, he has led the team for the flagship Mormon University to an undefeated start that's confounded uh, prognosticators and compelled the Cougars to a top 15 national ranking. And then he goes on. So the Atlantic highlights that BYU has a Jewish quarterback. It's making news. It's interesting. Um, BYU has a few games left. So here's the Utah game. Uh, coming up next is the University of Kansas, and uh, not that I'm like really a fan, but you know the, I do live in Kansas, so I support them. 
they already they already played Kansas State earlier, and of course they they won against them uh, kind of by a lot, thirty eight to nine. Um, but coming up, uh, BYU has University of Kansas, Arizona State, and then I guess the University of Houston. Uh, this one, if there's any symbolism going on, I'm thinking about the, like like any symbol like big symbolism left. Uh, this may be the game to watch. Arizona State, because if you don't know, Arizona State is the Sun Devils. I lived in the Phoenix area for a number of years. I love Phoenix. I love Arizona. Uh, sometimes I wish I could just move back to Arizona because I love it so much. Um, but we're meant to be here in Kansas and hopefully soon in Missouri. But one thing I could never really get behind in all the years that I lived there was... Um, Arizona State University's mascot, the Sun Devil. Uh, I was never in a situation where I was going to go to Arizona State, but I've, you know, run that scenario through my mind. And if I had, I don't know. I don't think that I could have like any apparel or anything like that that has the devil on it. You know, even if it is, the, you know, maybe it's not the devil, it's the Sun Devil. It, it's a type of the devil. <laughs> you know, it's not good. Um, of course, you know, they have this mascot because because <laughs> Arizona is really hot. Um, one of the big features in Arizona is the Arizona, Arizona sun scorching everything. But at least it's a dry heat. So it, it actually, moving here to Kansas, uh, it hasn't been much better because it doesn't necessarily get as hot as in Phoenix. Some, some days it does. But when it does get hot, it's humid and it's it's like all the worse, actually. So anyway, um, so this is my video that I did. The last video I did about this whole BYU thing, the BYU football season this year. Uh, if you want to get into more details um, of what I talked about before. And then there's this video. Now let's kind of transition and talk just a little bit about the Kansas City Chiefs because... It looks like they're having another good year. They are also 9-0 right now. Uh, they were the Super Bowl champions of the last Super Bowl. And uh, I'm not going to go into all the symbolism. There was so much going on with that Super Bowl. So much. It was earlier this year. I'll put a link for this video in the description box below. If you haven't watched it, I think you should. If you're interested in this video I'm making right now, I guarantee you'll like this video. And even if you've watched this video, you may want to go back and review it. Because... It may be it may become relevant uh, with this Kansas City Chiefs football season and uh, potentially Super Bowl if they go to the Super Bowl. So, uh, Kansas City Chiefs uh, here's their Wikipedia article, and as you can see, it's all in the green. So uh, they've won every game. Uh, they have more games coming up than BYU. So they have let's see, well, eleven through eighteen. So they have uh, eighteen or sorry, eight more games in the regular season. And then after that, there's the playoffs. So it's probably going to be harder for them to have like an undefeated season, but they may go to the Super Bowl again. Uh, things are looking pretty good for them, I think. Um, and what's interesting about them is that the head coach is a member of the church, Andy Reid. Here's a Deseret News article um, for March 22nd of this year. Why Andy Reid, or sorry, what Andy Reid said about his faith on the All In podcast. And so he talks about the church, and there's a part where he talks about uh, how he observes the Sabbath. And I, I know that there's people out there that are not the biggest fan of the NFL, be, or you know, because they play on Sundays. And, um, you know, your, feel, your feelings are valid, but I, I do just want to say uh, Andy Reid... He got a shout out during general conference by uh, Elder Cook in his talk called Sacred Scriptures, the Foundations of Faith. This is from the most recent general conference, October 2024. And um, there's this section where he says, the, the conversions that are occurring in our day are equally remarkable. Last June, coach Andy Reid, head football coach of the Kansas City Chiefs, and I along with others representing our faith and other faiths, spoke in a multi-faith event at the Riverside Church in New York City. Now, you guys are going to have to let me know. Um, 
but I feel like I should know for myself. I don't think there's ever a time in general conference that an NFL team has been mentioned in general conference. You know, hearing hearing the name Kansas City Chiefs in general conference <laughs> feels so out of place. Um, I, I might have to look into that and see, you know, if any other teams have ever come up in general conference, but th- this might be a first. But it's because we have a member of the church that is the head coach of this team. Okay, continuing. Coach Reed emphasized second chances in responding to invitations and opportunities, which is what the gospel of Jesus Christ is all about. The next morning with our wives, uh, Tammy Reed and Mary, we attended uh, the sacrament meeting at the Manhattan Second Ward. It was a spiritual service. There were many new converts in the congregation. Five recently baptized members, four men and one young man, were among the Aaronic priesthood members passing the sacrament. I'm happy to report that a similar influx of new members is happening throughout the church. And that's what um, my next video is going to be be about. I may actually schedule that video first. I'm not sure yet, but I'm probably going to record it after I recorded this one. We'll see. We'll see what I decide to do for tomorrow. Um, so I, I don't know, you guys. Uh, again, just a recap. So we have the church's university, one of its universities, but the only one that has a a football team, BYU. The quarterback is Jewish. And for the first time in 40 years, they're having an undefeated season. Okay. And everyone's pointing out that it feels like there is divine intervention. It's miraculous. It's magical. Okay. So we have this going on. And at the same time, we have the Kansas City Chiefs, whose head coach is a member of the church, and the Kansas City metro area is the area that the New Jerusalem is going to be be, going to be built in. And they had a pretty miraculous Super Bowl. Again, if you want to see all the details about that, where they played San Francisco in Sin City, I just want to point out uh, 49 is seven times seven. It's seven sevens. Okay. Uh, we were talking about, well, we've talked about sevens a lot on the channel, but like um, when you do something like seven times 10, you get 70. And that's like, it's like a super 10 or a super seven in a sense. But another way is seven times seven. Um, you think about, for example, Jubilee years, which is every 50 years. Um, in Judaism, they don't observe Jubilee years right now because the the all the tribes would would have to be in the land of Israel and the temple would have to be standing but um you have like these 49 years like these 49 regular years and then the 50th year is a jubilee it's a time when debts are forgiven and um people are are you know it's like a time of it's like uh, sorry i'm not doing it justice but it's a time when things are kind of like reset it's a time when things are reset and then you think about the Jewish feast day of Pentecost, otherwise known as the Feast of Weeks or Shavuot is the, is the Hebrew name for it. Shavuot comes after seven weeks, seven times after 49 days. The 50th day is Pentecost. That's why it's called Pentecost. So that adds another layer possibly of symbolism to that Super Bowl, which I didn't cover in this video, but for everything else, watch this video. So yeah, it feels like something special is going on this year. On top of all the other things that have happened this year, the Kirtland Temple coming back to the church, the two times that the United States, the whole United States were able to see the Aurora to one degree or another. Um, We've had these uh, total solar eclipses. There's, there's been so much this year like in every arena and now with with sports at least with you know college football and um, professional football (laughs) it's amazing okay that's gonna be it for this one if you haven't already please make sure to subscribe like this video if you liked it leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below also make sure to share and i'll talk to you guys later